I suppose let's get your view on the ECB decision. Um, you know, was it expected? Are you surprised? And what does it mean for the local market? Okay, right. Lots of questions and all of that. Uh, the first point is uh, Super Mario surprised us about exactly a week ago by saying we will do whatever it takes. Uh, nobody quite understood what that meant because it isn't entirely under his uh, ambit to do whatever it takes. He requires some help from uh, certain politicians, shall we say, uh, who have steadfastly said that they're not particularly interested. Now, there has been a, a tone shift in that one. But he didn't shift his tone today at all. He said the risk premia that are related to fears of the reversibility of the euro are unacceptable and they need to be addressed in a fundamental manner. Uh, the euro is irreversible, he said. So he certainly said exactly the same thing as he said a week ago and he didn't use words like whatever it takes. So I guess on the basis of that and people saying, well, there's no meat to it, you know, let's, uh, let, 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 let's get out. So. I, I th don't, really don't know what people were expecting, but certainly from my point of view, he said as much as he could a week ago. Uh, he's followed that line through. We know the discussions are underway. Uh, there's still quite a long time to go through the uh, Northern Hem Hemisphere summer, and I think you know, we'll start to have you know, one summit per week uh, starting in about October again, uh, trying to resolve all of these issues, which is why he's at least you know, kicked the can down the road and said as long as everybody plays ball, we should be doing something like this later in the year. Listen, uh, let's just look at, uh, you know, central banks in, in total right now because the Fed, uh, as some say, disappointing yesterday, but that was largely priced in that they weren't ready to act at this point in time. So I'm saying that you're going to have a recovery in the second half of the year in the United States um, and that the Chinese government will start stepping in and providing more stimulus to that economy. What does this all mean right now for, for performance of markets? So as you say, also with the ECB now kicking the can down the road, road further. Well, I think a lot of this is, uh, you know, exactly as you might have, might have imagined. Uh, certainly from the Fed side, you know, we're not even sure they've got one bullet left, but you surely wouldn't want to be shooting that in early August. You know, you have to see what's going on and, and try to carry it through. Uh, there are still a number of glimmers of light at the end of the tunnel there. So, again, I think it would be very wrong of them to do anything at, that, at, at this stage. And again, they've said it enough times, is to say, you know, we have to wait and see what happens in Europe, and we're really hoping it's going well. Geithner is saying, you guys really must put your act together and do something now. And again, I'm not sure what uh, central banks can do. It's an overhyped uh, uh, reaction. Everybody yeah. believes if you drop interest rates, you'll get growth. Well, I can tell you the Japanese tried that, and it didn't work. We've tried that in any number of countries. It works fine if the model is working and, the, and, and we're in a stable state. We're not in a stable state. And again, the more you've, you, you've terrified people with low interest rates, the more people have been rushing to buy bonds. Doesn't make any kind of sense on a long-term basis, but alarm is alarm and fear is fear and people are following it. L listen, let's uh, take a look at some of the results that have come through on the local market today. First half headline earnings per share for Liberty up by 44%, yet the stock down almost two rand on the day. Um, I mean, overall, I was speaking to, to Bruce Hempel earlier and he was saying that they've managed to, to stop um, to stop the leakage when it comes to uh, customer retention. They're actually starting to reverse that. That strategy has been fruitful. Um, you know, earnings are increasing in the asset management side of the business. Uh, so what disappointed the market today? Well, again, I, I think it's one of those situations where you don't know what you're reading. Uh, there are so many changes to this, and we've adopted shadow accounting, and it's in terms of IFRS this, and a change to the other thing, and we've moved the properties out of Liberty into Stanlib. You read the thing, you haven't got the faintest idea what you've just read. And the numbers, by the way, read in order plus 42.8, minus 6.3, and 5.5. Pick one. Yep. As you say, because <laughs> there was that headline earnings, but when you actually look at the operational, various operations, it was disappointing when you actually start drilling into that. So, so that, of course, would be something to note. How does Liberty fit into your view in terms of overall the insurance sector right now? Where, do you, where does it stand for you, especially in light of the fact that it has been a late entrant into Africa, but it is kind of citing Africa as its new growth area, as all the other companies in that space are right now? Yeah, again, I think getting into it is fine and, you know, following it up uh, and even if you've arrived late, you've at least got other people blazing a trail in front of you. But it's obviously still very, very small. So you have to look and say, you know, where are the assets and where are the assets growing? 
Now remember, these are not necessarily the assets of the company, they're the assets of the policyholders, just as surely as they are of the shareholders. So you do need to separate those out. Uh, but if you just look at a line that says assets under management has gone from 412 this time last year to 431 now, and they trumpet and say we had you know, such great inflows. Well, if you had great inflows and your uh, assets under management only went up 18 million, which is about 4% or so, uh, you know, it's not great news story. And again, I do think that is the story of uh, reporting of uh, life companies these days is that it's largely whatever the market did, and you, you have a look at that. Uh, we used to say that life insurers were a geared play on the stock market, and to some extent they still are, but a lot of that's been taken out in the reporting now. Listen, thank you so much for joining us today. We've run out of time, unfortunately, but good as always to have you on the show. Listen, Menchie, CIO of Abercrombie Investment Management.